Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be sharing with you my updated handbag collection. I've received so many requests for this video so I do hope you're going to enjoy it. It will be a little bit of a long one just because I thought I'd talk through every single bag that I have. I am going to be sharing both my designer bags and my high street bags as well. So what I thought I'd do is go through them category by category. I thought I would kick things off with shoulder bags starting with my vintage Fendi Mama Forever bag. Now I bought this one pre-love from The Real Real late last year and I'm so glad that I picked it up when I did because one, it's become one of my most used bags, most loved bags. I absolutely adore carrying this just because it's so easy to throw things in, but also because the price of it has gone up substantially. Fendi seems to have become really big at the moment, especially the their Fendi logo. And you know, despite not being one for flashy logos or anything like that, I actually don't mind the double F logo on here. I'm not really sure how well you're gonna be able to see it, hopefully. I think it's coming up pretty well on camera. To me, I think it looks very subtle and I just love the more kind of classic silhouette of this. It does have that vintage vibe, fits very nicely over my shoulder. It's very comfortable to wear. I like holding it in my hand as well. Just a really easy bag and it packs down really well so it's a great one to travel with. The next shoulder bag that I've got here is a vegan leather one and this is sort of a dupe I guess for the Manso Gabrielle bucket bag. It's from Sometime and it's just a caramel colored Bag. I think this is called their Nico Nico 2.1 or 2.0 bag, something like that. I actually really like this, however, I will say that the toggle on it doesn't hold very tight, so I do find that that loosens up over the course of the day. As with any bucket bag, you can just kind of squeeze it open like that and dip your hand right in, so probably not the best type of bag if you are living in an area where pickpocketing is very common. Uh, for me in Sydney, it's not really something I ever have to worry about, and usually I kind of put my valuable items towards the bottom of the bag, but it's just a really nice comfortable one. I do wear it quite frequently, so yeah, um, just a really nice classic bucket bag. Then the next one I thought I'd talk about is my most expensive handbag, and I'm just going to preface this by saying you do not need to spend this much money on a handbag. You do you. If you like spending money on bags, go for it. However, you can get so many incredible bags at a much more affordable price. Um, but yeah, this is the most expensive one that I own. It is my Chanel boy bag. This is in the small size in the caviar leather with the chevron pattern, which I absolutely love. And it has ruthenium hardware, which is basically an aged silver hardware. I love this. I'm so glad that I bought it when I did. It was sort of my dream combination for the boy bag and it's definitely been one that I've loved reaching for. I really enjoy pulling this one out even though it's my, not my everyday bag. I think for that reason it does actually feel a lot more special for me. I have done a full review on this bag. If you do want to go and watch that I'm going to pop it in the cards up there and also link it in the description box. But yeah this was actually I actually double checked the price uh, the other week and it looks like it's gone up about $1,100 since I purchased it. So for me, I feel like I've already made a good investment because the price increase has been pretty substantial. I wouldn't buy it at its current price, just FYI. I would probably look to get it pre-loved. I'm not sure whether I'll ever be able to afford to buy another Chanel bag, but I do really love the one that I have and it's definitely one that gives me a lot of joy. Next, let's talk about this bag from Linya. This is their sling bag. Now, I've actually done a bit of work with Linya in the past. So I've taken photos for their marketing and we've actually collaborated on videos and blog content. So they sent this to me as part of that work that I was doing for them. And the quality of this bag is absolutely beautiful it's the same leather that they used on the tote bag which I've got and I have done a review on that I'm going to talk about that later but yeah it's just very beautiful quality all their handbags are very well made and I find myself reaching for this more when I'm running some small errands and I want a bag that I can just sling across my body and just fit my essentials in it has the canvas interior which I think is really nice although being a lighter color you do have to keep in mind that it can or is prone to marking up and you can adjust the strap so this is a really lovely one. It comes in black. I actually do wish that I'd opted for the black color just because I do find this ready toned brown can sometimes be a little bit more difficult to pair, but it does go really well when I'm wearing more minimal neutral colored outfits. Then the next bag that I want to talk about is my 
Celine Trotter bag. So this one I actually purchased a few months before I got my Chanel bag and I got very lucky because I went into the Celine concession, I was just browsing, I had zero intention of actually buying anything and I found out they had 40% off a lot of bags and this one had already caught my eye previously, I'd been thinking about it and when I found out the price it was kind of too good not to go for it. I was also traveling to New Zealand so I was able to get my tax back on it too. Um, I should show it to you shouldn't I? It's the Celine Trotter bag. I did an unboxing of this when I purchased it and I also believe I've done a review so I'm going to link that up here and pop it down in the description box as well. I love this bag so much. It's sort of been one of my go-to bags. It's the one that I quite often wear when I'm going out and I want something that's going to be easy, carefree, that I don't have to worry about too much. I did make the mistake of wearing it worn open so you can kind of see that there is this metal bar here and it has some screws underneath. This is actually the bag that I'm using at the moment. It has these screws underneath and they did scratch the leather here on the holster. So unfortunately I managed to damage it within three days of purchasing it which was my own fault. But aside from that it's worn really well. I think I've spilled things on this. I've not really been too careful with it at all and it's just still looking really great aside from that one little scuff there. So I love this. It fits all, it, all my essentials, basically everything I could need. I think the size of this is maybe a little bit bigger than what I can fit in my Chanel bag. However, unfortunately this one's no longer available. So if you have had your eye on this, then I would suggest looking at the pre-love market. I do know that they pop up quite frequently on the Real Real and I'm also sure Vestia Collective as well. So maybe I'll drop some of my favorite color combinations down in the description box below. The next shoulder bag is one I get so many questions about and unfortunately I don't know if you can get this anymore. It's this little constellation bag. I bought this off Amazon and the seller, I think after I bought it, maybe they stopped shipping to Australia. But I got this because I had had my eye on the Prada Cahier bag, which I'm going to link that in the description box too. However, it was really expensive and I wasn't really sure if this was going to be more of a fad bag for me because obviously with this astrological design, it is very much a statement. And with things like this, I sort of was a bit concerned that maybe I would get sick of it and spending that much money on a handbag. I believe it was around the $3,000 mark. It seemed ridiculous to spend that on something that I might not want to wear forever. So I found a more affordable version and I actually really like this one because it's velvet. I think it looks just as good as the Prada one and I get so many compliments whenever I wear it. I actually also, the other thing I wasn't sure about was this, the way that the bag opens. So it has this little leather panel here, faux leather in this instance, and then it opens up like that. So it is a little bit more... I guess of a hassle to get in and out of the bag and I wasn't sure if I would like that. I actually don't mind it, however, now having had this for a while, I can say that I like the style of bag, but I am glad that I didn't invest in the astrological version of this bag. I would love to maybe get one of these bags in just a neutral, like a blushy color or a terracotta color. I think that would be really lovely. However, I don't think the Zodiac version would be for me long term. Still love this bag, still going to keep wearing it, but in terms of investing in the actual real thing, uh, I, I think I definitely made the right choice. Next we've got this little shoulder bag. This is from LM and this is in a dark green leather or forest green leather and I really love using this. It's kind of like a little croissant baguette style bag which I adore. No, really what I love about this bag is how unusual it is. It does have this beautiful big round button here which is gold and it contrasts really nicely. It just kind of clips in and then it is open at the top. I do believe they still sell this one however I'd say they're probably more known for their handheld bags, the ones that sort of look like they've been smushed down on the top. I'll link those down below too because I've, I've seen quite a lot of people wearing them recently, especially the right hand straw version just because it is spring summer in the northern hemisphere. But yeah, it's just a really lovely little shoulder bag. You can't fit a lot in here and again because it is open at the top, it's not really the best for pickpockets but if you had a long wallet in there, I mean you probably wouldn't be able to fit much else but no one would really be able to pull that out. But I do really enjoy using this. I think it's really nice to have a statement bag like this to kind of pull out every now and then. Next let's talk about another bag from Linnea. This is their crossbody bag and I actually think of all the bags that I've got and I 
I actually believe I might have most of the bags that they sell. Uh, this is my absolute favorite. I adore this. This is one that I reach for quite a lot. It actually reminds me of the Louis Vuitton Alma BB bag. I think it's the one. However, it doesn't have any branding or anything like that on it. So the quality of it, again, is really lovely. I've worn this so much. I haven't babied it. Personally, I prefer to just carry it top handle because it looks really ladylike. You will have seen that in a lot of my videos, I'm sure. But it also comes with a crossbody strap, which I've got inside the bag. So you can wear it on your shoulder too if you don't want to carry it, which I think is really handy. Again, it does have that same canvas interior. I did partner up with Lynette on a video for this, so I am going to link that review up here. I think I styled it four different ways to show you how you could use this for every occasion. But yeah, I love this bag. It's got the feet on the bottom too, so you don't have to worry about it getting dirty if you need to place it on the ground or anything. So yes, that is another one of my favorites. Then next, let's talk about my Philip Lim Mini Pashley bag. I bought this, I think it must have been three years ago now. I bought it from Essence during the sale and I feel like I got very lucky because it was a great price and also the color combination, I always get compliments on this and unfortunately I don't believe this exact color is available anymore. It was called Mushroom. They do come out with similar shades every season, but this I just thought was a really nice color option. It's more of a cool toned nude and I feel like it goes really well with a lot of my wardrobe. Funnily, I don't love the larger Pashley style, but I really love how it looks in the smaller design. It does have these little zippers that come down here, which do help to expand the bag slightly. And then it's got this little leather strap, which holds the two handles together, which honestly, this is probably the most annoying part of the bag, but I do like the fact that you have that option to help the bag retain its structure. I have also done a review on this. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to tag everything up here, but I will link everything in the description box for sure. It does have this little opening here, and then, yeah, the bag does open forward. So if I can just hang on. The zippers are slightly stiff, probably because they're a wide tooth design and I don't open them very much, but yeah, it just opens forward like that. I do keep it stuffed to help it retain its structure and comes with a little leather shoulder strap as well. But yeah, this is one of my favorites and I do kind of still reach for this time to time. Uh, probably doesn't get anywhere near as much love as my Fendi bag, but I really enjoy this and so glad that I have this as part of my bag collection. Next, we've got my little tote bag from Abel. I think this is called the Elsabet crossbody tote and this one again it's another shoulder bag but it's basically like a mini tote bag and I really love carrying this again just top handle I think it's really neat and you can also put your arm through the loops as well but it does come with a crossbody strap now what I like about this is that it is more of I guess a vintage vibe so it looks a bit more rustic the leather doesn't have any glazing so you do have that raw edge of the leather which I think looks really cool and it makes it look a little bit more worn. The leather does have slight imperfections to it like it's not perfectly black. It almost has a bit of a faded effect to it and you can kind of see little kind of wrinkles and things in the leather which I really like. This one is one that I tend to use a bit when I'm walking the dog or just when I'm going out and about and again I want a bag that I can throw a few things in and rush out the door. But yeah, like I said, it's a great one for wearing top handle and I love the fact of having a smaller tote bag just because they are one of my favorite styles of bags to carry. The next bag that I have is my Numero Un Mini from Polen. Sorry, I completely butchered that, I'm sure. This is a really cute little mini bag. It's in the sand color and it has this lovely grained leather at the bottom and then this is suede. And this is, the, the opening is really cool. So you can actually use one hand. It just pops down like that. It's got a magnetic closure and then to open it, it opens up like that and it's also got these little poppers here so that you can expand the bag more. This has the most beautiful chain strap. I love the fact that this is more of an antiqued gold. I just think it is stunning. It looks almost like jewelry and you can adjust the length of the, of the strap. I will say that for length, I do find it a bit long, even on me and I'm five foot eight. So what I do is I do knot the strap to make it a bit shorter so that I can wear it a bit higher up on my body. In terms of how this has worn so far, I'm really, really happy with it. However, obviously, given that it does have this suede flap at the top, it is going to be prone to marking up. I have sprayed my bag with Colonel, but I don't think it's really helped me 100% because I can see there's a teensy weensy little mark here. So you just have to be careful when you do have a bag in a lighter color. I haven't worn this with anything black or with denim that would potentially um, rub onto the bag. Um, it does have a little 
pocket here. But if you guys want me to do a proper full review of this bag, let me know. I do have a post up on my blog, which I'm going to link in the description box. But yeah, if you would like more of a video review, do tell me and I will be sure to film something soon. But I love the color of it. I think it's a really nice sort of a warm toned nude and yeah, really fun to wear for winter as well. Then the next shoulder bag that I've got here is the tulip bag from Linya. So this was a very kind gift from Roman and Jen who are the founders of the brand. Um, they sent this to me completely unexpected. This is made from a vachetta leather. So it is very similar to the leather that Louis Vuitton use on a lot of their bags. So because of that reason, I keep it stored in its dust bag in its box because I want the leather to patina evenly. It does also have this really lovely thick canvas material, if you can see that poking out through the sides, which I think is really lovely. This is just such a gorgeous bag. It's got a lot of structure and it has this bright yellow contrast here, which I think is really vibrant and fun. I haven't worn this very much, as I mentioned, because I do keep it in the box. So for that reason, mine is not really worn in at all. The more you wear this, the more the leather sort of softens and gens look so beautifully worn in. I'm going to put a photo of it here on the screen so you guys can see. So I think I'm going to maybe pop this one out in the spare room so that I can remember to reach for it more frequently. Then the next bag that I've got here is from Charles and Keith. This is a shoulder bag and I swear this is probably, again, one of my most used bags at the moment. I absolutely love the wavy design detail that you've got on the handle here. Now, one of the things that drew me to this bag was actually the closure of it. It reminds me a little bit of the Fendi Peekaboo, which is a bag that I've had on my wish list for some time now. So it has a clip opening here and you can kind of see there's a pocket. And then it also has a magnetic closure at the back. The back one's a lot easier to open. It also comes with a shoulder strap as well, but I just prefer to hold this on my hand or wear it one over my shoulder. I love the way that that handle looks. You can also double up the straps as well if you want. So you can have the wavy strap kind of, whoop, you can have the wavy strap sitting in the front and then have it hanging over your shoulder, which I think looks really neat too. I will say that the hardware on the clasp at the front here has scratched up just a little bit, but I think that's kind of normal with bags like this or with any bag really, it's gonna kind of wear over over time but I love the color I think it's called clay but it's just a really beautiful rich terracotta hue the next bag that I've got here is my most recent bag purchase what I bought uh, as one of my autumn purchases for the five piece French wardrobe challenge which you will find out all about what I decided to buy very soon um, this one is from Oriton and I have to admit Oriton's not really a brand that I would think to go and buy a bag from but when I saw this I really really adored it it reminded me a lot of a bag from Celine however at a fraction of the price and what really drew me to this bag is actually the mock croc leather I think this is just such a nice detail it makes it look very understated elegant but also has a bit of a vintage vibe to it and then it's just got this opening like that. So again, very, very vintage feeling. I love the almost faded gold hardware as well. And this does come with a crossbody chain strap too. But I like the way that you can just hold it as a handle like that or loop your arm through it. It's just a very kind of refined, elegant type of bag. You can't fit a lot in here, of course, but the things you do for fashion. <laughs> Um, then I've got a couple of other sort of smaller random bags that I thought I'd talk about before I dive into my totes, which I have quite a few of these days. So the next one I've got here is a little bum bag. This is from ASOS and I purchased this to take with me when traveling just because I thought it would be really easy to kind of put my essentials in here and I can just wear it across my body. I don't wear it around my waist. It's not really my kind of thing, but I actually really like this. It's made from a faux leather. And I wear this quite a lot when I'm walking the dog just because I can kind of fit my essentials in here and I don't have to have anything on my shoulder. So this was a really good find. I feel like it was around $30 mark. Then the next bag is another one I got for travel. This is my, and I don't really know how you pronounce it, but is it Fjall Raven? Um, Kankin. <laughs> this one is made out of recycled plastic, which I think is really cool. And I got this one because I also have this insert for my camera gear. So I wanted to take my camera gear with me to New Zealand and I figured it would be a really good solution to pop it in here. This is such a great little backpack. I do have to say that the nylon straps do dig into my clavicles a little bit when I'm wearing it, especially if I've loaded it up with a lot of stuff, but I really love this and I totally understand why they have become such popular bags. Um, 
I think the colors are really fantastic too. There's so many brilliant options. Then for totes, I've got quite a few here. So first one I thought I'd mention is my Day Square Tote from Everlane. Now I have kind of done a comparison blog post on this comparing it to the original Market Tote. And spoiler, my favorite of the two is definitely the square size, just because I find that it's a little bit more compact, looks a bit more proportion with my body, and I'm tall as well. So I think if you're petite and you're trying to decide, definitely get the small one. But yeah, the quality of it's pretty nice, but it's the same as the other one. However, the interior doesn't seem to be quite the same raw leather, so it's much smoother, but it's just a nice classic tote bag, fits a lot in it. The leather is pretty hard wearing as well, so you don't have to be too precious with it. Because I mentioned that, I figure I might as well go on to my market tote next, which I have here. And you can kind of see it's definitely gotten quite floppy compared to my day square tote. So I've worn this quite a lot. I was using it every single day for work at one point. And this one has this much lighter interior. And you can kind of see it's got more of a raw distress sort of a finish to it, um, which is just natural. And it can kind of, I guess, pill up. <laughs> on the inside that's just something to expect but I really like the color of this bag I think it's absolutely beautiful really nice neutral so um, however I did do a whole tote comparison review video and this one did come out at the bottom so just want to be quite transparent with that I do still really like it it is one I reach for I think size wise I much prefer the mid-size tote then we have my Linear tote bag and this is just again a really beautiful tote bag. The leathers that they use are stunning. It's so nice and soft and supple like I think you can probably see how much it is softened up compared to the leather on my sling bag. I use this every single day for a year and you know I just adore it. I've got so many fond memories of using this. It's got the magnetic closure. I have done a review of this again and also I did include it in that tote comparison review video. The handles on it are quite stiff so do keep that in mind and again um, in terms of the color it is more of a ready brown so if you want more of a cognac brown you might prefer the color of the Everlane tote otherwise the black in this is just beautiful as is the navy too and this has that canvas interior mine's hand up, held up really well just got a couple of small scratches on the back which are actually from when Winston was a kitten and he attacked it unfortunately but it's on the inside of the bag so no one can kind of see that when I'm wearing it then the next tote that I have here is from Charles and Keith and this again is a vegan leather bag and I quite like this because it's more of a vertical tote which is different to the other ones that I have. It has this beautiful kind of woven design to it so it's got sort of like a matte leather and then more of a shiny leather and then this sort of unfinished detail which kind of runs up the side of the bag which I think is really lovely. I am enjoying using this bag. It does also have a little pouch in it as well which you can put your cards and coins and things like that in there which I think is great and the top's just got a magnetic closure. If this is still available obviously I will link it down in the description box below but I think it's a good alternative to a leather tote bag if you're looking for something that is well made as well. Just to keep in mind I have noticed that these have kind of started to I guess sort of flare up slightly so they don't sit so flush flat to the bag as they did when I first got it. Then the final bag that I wanted to talk about is my Kuyana leather tote bag. This is hands down one of my favorite bags that I own. It is such an amazing option if you're looking for just a classic black tote. Now this is very unstructured so if you want something that looks a little bit more formal the totes from Linnea and Everlane are probably your best bet. Probably Linnea actually because that one stands up on its own. But this one I think is really great if you want something that looks smart that's going to wear really well. I think I've had this for two years now and it's held up amazingly. It doesn't have any scratches on the leather at all. There's no fraying to any of the stitching. The interior still looks great. I mean, I probably could give it a little bit of a clean, but it's looking really good in there. The only thing I don't like is that the pocket has a raw leather interior, which I just think is kind of bizarre, considering that the rest of the leather interior is sort of this coated finish, which I really like. This one you can actually tie as well. So it pulls in the bag and chain, I'm not doing a very good job of this, hang on. So you can tie in the sides, which actually changes this shape, but I don't love the way that that looks. I prefer the way it looks just as a classic tote. But I really adore this one and 100% recommend it. I still need to buy the tote organizer that comes with this. I'm going to link that down below as well just because I feel like that would help me to be able to find everything in there. So there you have it. That is my full handbag collection. I hope that you guys enjoyed it and I would love to know if you have a favorite. I'm so sorry it took me so long to film this video. Obviously also I have a lot of handbags and nobody needs to have this many bags. 
Part of it is because of what I do for work, but also I really adore all these bags and I do cycle them through. Aside from shoes, bags are something that I do really love. And like I said at the start, you really don't need to spend a lot to get a really beautiful handbag. Some of my most loved bags are ones that are more on the, I would say, high quality but affordable end of the price spectrum. Thank you guys again so much for watching. I really hope you're enjoying Everyday May and I'll see you again tomorrow for a new video. See you then. Bye.